The title of my sermon is My Ends of the Earth, and I preached this on Sunday, October the 25th, 2020, at the Drive-In Church at Prospect, and then indoors at Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Larry Jameson. Dear ones, God designed you to be a shining light and a faithful witness to your family. That's your Jerusalem. To the people that you already know, that's your Judea. And to people you don't know as well, that's your Samaria. And to people far, far away, that's the ends of the earth. You know, today we are considering our witness far, far away. And no, I'm not talking about Shrek. <laughs> this is more important than you think. You know, it does not matter that there is a great physical distance between us and people on the other side of the earth. God wants us to do what we can, and really, we can do a lot when God empowers us. Surprisingly, this is not optional for us. In Matthew 28, 18, this is what Jesus did not say. Okay, this is what he did not say. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore, and this is completely optional that I want you to consider, go and make disciples of all nations. Or if you don't feel like going to all the nations, maybe just the ones nearby. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But you can use different words if you like. And teaching them to obey everything or maybe most of the things that I have commanded you. Okay, so that sounds pretty lame, doesn't it? Now listen to what Jesus actually said. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. End quote. Okay, so these words from Jesus apply to you, and they apply to me. This is a commandment from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is one of the reasons that we were put on this earth. You know, this is a commandment from Jesus, and it is one of the reasons why Prospect, Trinity, and Asbury churches were put on this earth. Are we a great commission church? Well, yes, we are. Now, not everything we do is a mission to the ends of the earth. You know, in order to seriously obey this direct command from Jesus, we need to reach out to the people in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We don't have to make foreign missions our only focus, but we can't ignore it either. We need a balance. You know, three years ago, Sue and I went on a pilgrimage with Kyung Hee Sa uh, to visit churches in South Korea. It was an amazing experience, and we learned so much. You know, we were taken from church to church in a beautiful bus, and there was a stop to visit a cemetery. Now, our host took us to the Foreign Missionary Cemetery in Seoul, Seoul, South Korea. And about 30,000 Koreans visit that place every year. And they are proud of their missionary friends, and they're grateful for the gospel. You know, later on, the Korean, our Korean host took us to a, a museum where we saw photographs of Billy Graham preaching in South Korea, you know, and this was a long time ago. They've got the pictures in the museum, and they show it to their family. The churches of South Korea are proud of their missionary friends and grateful for the gospel. You know, South Korea has a vital and spirit-filled Christian population, and their churches are amazing. They have not only uh, built the largest Protestant church in the world, they have several of them. Now, the gospel came to Korea about three generations ago. You know, my grandmother was born in 1885, or at least my maternal grandmother was born in 1885, and that's when the first Protestant missionaries went to Korea. So that's only three generations ago. And yet in that period of time, Korea has transformed into an amazing country. Dear ones, the age of foreign missions is not over. You know, right now, there are over 430,000 full-time missionaries 
serving in other countries all around the world. And now, now the emphasis is on missionaries who have a professional skill that they can share in the location of their ministry. Professional training in disciplines such as medicine, art, agriculture, well drilling, business, education, dentistry, science, engineering, biology, pharmacy, architecture, you know, things like that. Give missionaries a practical way to serve the community and then form a bridge of legitimate relationships for the gospel of Jesus Christ to travel through. And there are scores of graduate schools that train missionaries here in the United States and around the world. You know, one of the best of these is the School of Intercultural Studies at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, just a few miles from where I was born. Now, let me tell you about CRU, uh, formerly called Campus Crusade for Christ. It has uh, over 25,000 full-time missionaries working not just in the United States, but also in 190 countries around the world. Now, CRU is the largest Protestant parachurch mission organization in the world, but there are a lot more. And here are a few that you may have heard of. World Vision International, Wycliffe Bible Translators, Young Life, Youth for Christ, Youth with a Mission. You know, Christian missions are important, and missionaries need your prayers and financial support. You know, the need for cross-cultural, cross-language, cross-continental witnessing has never been more needed than today. You know, I served six years as the pastor of Wesley United Methodist Church in Elk Neck, Maryland, and that was from 1993 to 1999. You know, I've never seen such a mission-minded church in all my life, and being there was like taking a degree in missions. We had so many missionaries come by, and, and they were constantly stopping by and calling us, like, we'd like to stop by. We're in the area. We'd like to stop by. And so they visited, and they preached, and they taught at Wesley. Now, let me tell you what made the biggest impression on me as I was the pastor there, being visited by missionaries. It was their consistent, fervent, urgent, and passionate request for prayer. Yeah, Prayer, not money, but prayer, because ch prayer changes lives, and prayer makes impossible situations possible. Many times, I was told by different missionaries who were visiting Wesley Church that if I ever got a nudge to get up in the middle of the night and pray for a missionary, I shouldn't ignore that. I should get on my knees and pray right by my bed. Many times I've heard uh, missionaries tell me about going through a terrible trial, and then they found out later that somebody back home, somebody home was praying for them at that exact moment, and by the grace of God, they were delivered. Now, this is something it's a real thing. <laughs> I heard it from too many people, too many different people to consider it to be a coincidence. Yes, missionaries need our financial support, but more than that, they need our prayers because God has put them on the front lines of spiritual warfare. So here's the part of my sermon when uh, I want to get practical and ask the question, how can we apply what we've learned in this sermon? Well, dear ones, I have three things I'd like to share. Number one, if the Great Commission from Jesus Christ is still valid, and it is, <laughs> we all need to embrace the idea that our church needs to be mission-minded. You know, in the, the age of missions is not dead because Jesus Christ is not dead. He's alive. And we are Christians because of missionaries. Prospect, Trinity, and Asbury were planted by missionaries. Every church was planted by missionaries. We need to support missions that reach out to the ends of the earth. Okay, the second point is that instead of doing many things poorly, we need to focus in and choose to do one thing really well. And as a congregation, we need to choose one or two foreign missions to support and then do that with passion and with enthusiasm. And I believe that God will reward us for that because God wasn't kidding when he gave us the Great Commission. 
Okay, my third point is that if you can send somebody from your church to visit a foreign mission field, that's a good thing. It will not cost that much, you know, especially when we all chip in together. God will bless your church for being generous, and lives will be changed. Let us pray. Dear Holy Spirit, by your grace, multiply the effectiveness of this sermon in the lives of every person in our church. Help us all to become mission-minded and committed to the Great Commission in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Help this congregation to embrace and love one mission far, far away and inspire us to pray fervently and to give generously. Send a few of our people, dear Lord, on visits to the mission field so that we can see for ourselves your power to change lives and to bring justice. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to my sermon.